this is Joe on relationships. I am going to discuss arguments. Now, you know, usually you argue for the sake of arguing. And sometimes arguing might not be the best solution in a problem. Sometimes you may pick a fight with the other for the sake of picking a fight with the other or they may pick a fight with you for the sake of picking a fight. <laughs> but you know you use humor in a situation you understand where the partner is coming from and you know you do whatever. Now, I used to be very bad in coping with arguments. I would say, she would think that I was winning all the arguments, but mm, deep down inside, I think I was losing the arguments. <laughs> but, 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 uh, um... What I realize and what I learned is you learn about the person in each argument. This is what you should do. I mean, you know, the, there, there'll be some people who say, oh, get out and, you know, whatever. You know, sometimes you need to work it through because you don't give up on the person and uh, as much as you like to give up on you yourself in situations you don't give up on the person you work through whatever argument that is there um sometimes it's discussion with family members sometimes it's other family members sometimes it's your own family members yeah i don't know it's 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 you know, all I know is around holidays or birthdays, the problems always arise. You know, it could be a stressful time for your partner, or you could, it could be a stressful time for yourself. Um, what I learned is you have to roll with punches. You know when your stressful times are coming. For me, stressful times are in between Thanksgiving and March. <laughs> Why I say March is because that's when you're coming down from the high and you know, everything, you know, just goes haywire. Then you have all the parties and, you know, you got to cope with whatever you got to cope with. But, I don't know. It's just how it is. But, uh, you know, when you're meeting with the family again, Thanksgiving and... You know, when you go through the holidays, you meet their family and stuff like that. It's, you know, there's tensions, you know, there's stresses. It's like, you gotta deal with your anxiety toward them, towards your family and their family and, uh, her family or his or whatever. Um, and whatever you are, I don't know. And then they got to deal with yours and theirs. So it's always stressful to deal with families. Uh, and if you're a couple, you just got to roll with the punches, you know. There's going to be times where, there's, there, where they're more anxious and they're beating you <laughs> up. Like no 
tomorrow. There's times that you're going to want to do stuff that you can't because you just got to accept it. There's a lot going on. You know, some days are worse than others, which I'll get in another podcast. I'm going to try to get Sierra Bliss on this podcast because she could talk about the other side of the relationship and she could give her perspective, which is a good perspective, which, you know, she'll, she'll tell you in the beginning, I was high strung, I was anxious, I was this, I was that, and you know, I still am, but you know, it's like, they'll, they'll pick a fight with you, (laughs) you know, it's like, I don't know. And I, I was very bad and adamant, and you had to be right. But you know, you you learn a lot when you listen and you lose. <laughs> you 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 know you know you don't have to be right in every situation. I mean, that's just what I learned. I mean, I had a I had a fight for my opinion and what's right, but it's only when you listen to the other and take their advice, you know, maybe you might not think the advice is the best of times, but, you know, it could be better than what you're doing. It's like somebody who's a skeptic. It might think, hey, that's not the best, but it could be, that advice could be better than the one that you're doing. I don't know. Um, let's just say, yesterday, I nonsensically did two things. I brought up something about Corbin, uh, Baron Corbin's storyline twice, and uh, mentioned something about um, a magazine article and and uh, um, and. A magazine article and uh, uh, something behind it. Like, and I'm thinking, hey, it's good or whatever. But you know, she was picking a fight with me. She's like, this is upsetting or whatever. I don't know, you know, you do that sometimes. You, you, uh, you sometimes you do subconsciously do things. You don't even realize it. And she's like, she picked it, pinpointed it on that. Let's say, you're you're using this to talk about your situation, and you're complaining about it, but you're using it in a different way. Now um, she she's most likely right about that. I mean, it's you know she knows how to cover the point, <laughs> so. <laughs> So I made her laugh. I said, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, you're arguing me for the sake of arguing. <laughs> and like, uh, but she most likely had, um, or I should say, she had a very good point. <laughs> you know, you know, and it upset her. But I guess, you know, it's. You just got to understand that you can't control the situation a lot of times. And you're going to have to give in when you may be wrong. (laughs) Or when you may be right or when you're wrong. You have to give in when you're wrong. I don't know. It's like there's no right and wrong in a relationship. It's just... How you make the most of it 
to deal with difficult situations. And a lot of times, it's working with the other to get there. And they got to work with you. <laughs> they got to deal with your flaws. And they got to deal with all the other stuff that I'm sure someone else doesn't want to deal with. <laughs> and so if they're dealing with your flaws... Well, they love you and they want to be with you, so just respect that. I know some people may have it easy, but some people don't. Some people, you have to deal with the arguments pursuing when they, when you see a couple on Facebook posting that they've been to all these good locations such as uh, in another state I won't mention what and they gotta you know that they're taking all these beautiful pictures and everything else and and then you gotta listen you gotta be there knowing if you're me not having cash and flow to do it and you gotta be like okay well it sucked to be in that situation you gotta you gotta you you gotta take the heat where it comes because you're not gonna win in that situation I don't know um and you just gotta say you know <laughs> you just got to say, hey, you know, they're, uh, you know, they make you feel bad, and you, you see these houses, and you know, whatever, it's like, you know, they, they did whatever they needed to do, I don't know, but it's just frustrating situation to be in, because you can't necessarily compare yourself to others, because you go and do whatever it's just you know it's competition like you you compete it's like I can never outdo my brother with stuff <laughs> like I try I like you know starting the year I was doing good I was selling on eBay and like all of a sudden you know I uh, I didn't do too good. Uh, um, it, it just, it just, when I was younger, like, uh, it, it just, when I was younger, like, in this one I'm going to talk about competition. I was competing with my brother and literally everything. Um, NHL, hockey, 97. For EA Sports, for anyone who plays, and uh, um, for anyone who remembers NHL '97, I'm sure I'll have that link in the description below. But we played, and you know, we we competed. Competing in wiffle ball, we competed in hockey. You know, and he had his team, I had my team. He scored about 500 goals on me in the season. I was a really crappy goaltender in the beginning, but I uh, tried and I played. But you know, we were competitive. I grew up like that, and I. Had friends who were competitive too, but uh, you know, it's like uh, you, it comes to a time where you're gonna have to, uh, you know, you can't be competitive. Uh, you could be competitive cooperatively, but you can't be competitive with your partner. You gotta, you gotta help them out. They gotta help you. It's 
it's got to be a team. You're a team. And it's like, when you're trying to compete against everyone else, you lose focus of what you need to do. That's why you got to stay your course. You got to set goals and stay your course. I mean, just as you do with yourself and you set goals, uh, you need to first work with the one you're with and set goals. See what you're going to do. Communicate. Have a plan. This is what I say. You got to get to the nitty gritty and you got to have conversations that you don't want to have. And that's financial ones. Because you may, you know, no one likes to discuss about finance. Finance is always a course of anxiety and stuff like that for everyone. So, I mean, the best thing is, you know, you, you set goals. You say, hey, this is what we're going to do. And you you, you, may, they, you or her or whatever may say it's not going to work out or whatever. But if you could set certain goals, put... A few dollars aside and build from there it might not be bad you could at least work from there and hey maybe a side hustle like this will get you somewhere I mean I mean I uh, I'm advertising right now I mean Trying to do my best. So, uh, like I say, you know, it is what it is. You know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, sometimes you may uh, do the best that you could possibly do. So, uh, um, this is Joe and Relationships. One day I'd like to get Sierra Bliss on the show and have her talk about her side of the relationships. Um, um, she could offer insight from a woman's perspective. Uh, this is just the guy's perspective. And and what I realize about the guy's perspective is... Most likely, some of the time, we're wrong. <laughs> uh, could be debated. Some of the time or all the time, I don't know. But, <laughs> you know... I will say one thing. That there is a balance. And... Uh, a degree of success. I mean, you have to swallow your pride in situations. You can't go on thinking that everything's all good and dandy and, you know, some things are going to be wrong and, you know, rather her or your partner know before it bites you in the ass. <laughs> Pardon my language. Okay, I'm going to uh, discuss that there is a new book coming on Amazon by uh, Bill Clinton and James Patterson. It's the president's daughter. Now, I, uh, I, I, I guess, you know, Bill Clinton was inspired by what happened in the Oval Office and his daughter, and 
he wanted to put some inspiration in it and he paired up with a very good novelist in James Patterson. I'm a writer, so I know it's very uh, hard to put ideas together and develop a story and stuff like that. So I give him credit. Uh, you could check that out on Amazon, and I have the link below of where you could get it. It's in the description part. Uh, you could get it on Amazon, but uh, the description uh, will send you to the page where you can get it. Also, uh, I reach out to also I want to give a shout out to Joe's Writers Club. Uh, they're one of the members or a few of them are supporters of the Joseph Vivaldi Network. Um, they do good things with their writing. Uh, you know, check them out online either at Joe's Writers Club dot com or Joe's Writers dot com and if you're interested in writing, uh, just give them a shout out. Also, I am going to give um, a shout out to Stash Investments. Uh, Stash is a place where you can invest for five dollars and maybe more and they will give you twenty dollars and they will give me twenty dollars just for kick just for the link below that I'm posting on the description so uh if you want to start investing or if this is a side thing for you, it's good to invest long term and check it out. I mean, you're it's up and down. You do reading, you'll find out you could also invest in your favorite companies such as McDonald's, Starbucks, or Coca-Cola, or... Pepsi or many many other companies uh, even uh, so check it out uh, where was I with with stash I uh, just click the link below in the description you could get twenty dollars and I get twenty dollars and uh, that's off of investing so uh, you invest in your favorite companies and you see what goes on from there. Also, check out check out uh, several things to plug. <laughs> uh, check out Richard Andrew Alkus's book. Malathoria Volume 1 I personally had the honor of editing the book and it's available on the Kindle and uh, if you want to know where to get it you know, click the link below in the description if you want a book that will take you into another planet, another world, and you want a war, and you're a friend of Dune, or even Star Wars, or 
something like in the line like that. Malathoria is a book for you because it is in that line of another world or another galaxy or another universe and there's war. So check it out. Also, I'd like you to check out my book, The Driving Dream. Apply what you like to your boring job. I redid the book, and it's narrated by Tony Chiapetta, and he did a very uh, good job with the book, narrating it bring it to life and you know I'm a proponent of you know doing many many things uh, and you know when you're in a job you want to learn all the skills you can and you want to do something to make it interesting. And also when you're working on a dream. And you're passionate about something. You got to take into heart. What you can do with it. And. This book's for you. To, it's a. Book that. Uh, on the Kindle. And Audible that explains it. So please check it out. Also, finally, um, please su support or subscribe to the Joseph Vivaldi Network on Patreon. Uh, the links are below. Um, Patreon.com slash Joseph Vivaldi Network. Um, it helps support podcasts like uh, Joe on Relationships, uh, Joe's Perspective on History, uh, Improving Your Mental Health, and uh, classic shows like News with Joe Vexter, um, shows like Slow Mojo Timeless Poetry Show and uh, much more. Uh, we could also, you know, maybe get, you know, some. I'm not guaranteeing it, but we can do a lot with, you know, keeping this show going. And, you know,. Uh, we, in uh, keeping this show going, we can help people who are going through stuff, and we can help, you know, give you good, valuable information that we try to bring together here to give it to you through podcasts. So, uh, please support us, follow us on Patreon, and, uh, also, another thing. We're on Spreaker, too. At least for the year until the contract is up. Then, we might look for another podcasting network, podcasting channel, podcasting thing to work on. We'll just see if we get our money's worth from this uh, Spreaker and so on and so forth. So, um, this has been Joe on Relationships. Have a good night.